Hi guys and uh, welcome to the instructional video for admins, uh, either new or old, on how to host and uh, what the different little things mean that I just sent you in this email. Um, so here we go. Uh, first of all, thank you for donating your time because if without your time we wouldn't be able to run this. Uh, we can't do everything ourselves and as stressful sometimes as it may seem, we do. We are very appreciative of your efforts <coughs> in helping us bring uh, this big tournament to the scene. Right, so here we go. Let's uh, originally start off with how to host the game before we talk about the actual brackets and how they're going to work. So uh, let's assuming you've you've got Dota because you've got to have Dota in order for it to work. Uh, to host a tournament game, you will go to the create a lobby tab. You create a lobby. You will then go to the edit settings and when the ticket is live because at present it doesn't seem to be working but when it does work under the spectator tab rather than enable disable it'll actually have a bunch of different options and one of them will be the ticket which will say NZN 2015 qualifier blah 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 or Dota 2 League or something um, you click that that's really important if you want people to see the match because that then it saves it under this tab watch you know the uh, tournament tab we'll have our little ticket there and attached that will be all the games that we've hosted now don't fret if it, your game that you're currently hosting doesn't appear on this because it will only display up to four or five matches at once uh, anything beyond that um, is down the page and you can't actually scroll um, so for a lot of teams the matches post game they will be able to link it to friends and say hey here's my match that I played in a professional ticketed tournament uh, for some teams they'll be on the front page it's just how it works uh, they've improved it. I think it goes up to eight now I used to only go up to four in any case you'll go back to here you'll create a lobby you'll um, edit the settings you'll make sure that this is uh, set to New Zealand you also make sure that the server location is not automatic is in fact Australia because that is the server that we're playing on and then you will put their lobby password in there we'll get to that later but uh, you'll be putting your lobby password in there and then you've got a captain's mode so just to recap captain's mode there's a lobby password the server location is Australia and the spectators is set to the tournament ticket all these other settings you don't actually need to touch unless you're doing the finals don't worry about it uh, just do all those settings click OK and then wait for the teams to, to arrive as the admin you should be sitting in this channel you should have APOG on your tag so they know that this is clearly the right place to be if you sit there with uh, without an APOG tag they may not think it's the right bracket um, or they may think that they've got the password wrong but if you're sitting there clearly with the APOG tag in front of your name even those guys who are not part of APOG you should have it for this weekend because it'll be there ready for you to go this is the position where casters will sit so don't sit in the casters position put it sit in the unassigned players position and teams will then join the lobby now they may ask you a variety of questions uh like which side do we go who gets what basically it's first comes first serve if a team comes in and they grab one of these top spots whether it be dire or radiant that's the team they've, they've picked their side away they go all the other random options are random um now time frames if you get to the end of the time frame there's a set on the schedule like you need to leave to host another match we have to determine a winner if the game has not started at that time and point in time so that you can leave in a comfortable time then um you're gonna have to determine a winner so in the event that the one team is there and the other team isn't the team that is awfully there ready to go they get the win you just report back to me in the skype chat uh, or on steam if, if you don't have the skype i hope you've, hopefully you're on the skype chat by then uh with your password and who won uh so we'll, again we'll come to that shortly <coughs> so you got this team won here's the password this team won that's all you need to tell, do i will update the brackets from there uh for now I may pass that off to somebody else but for now that's that's what you'll be doing um in the event that both teams are not ready and say one team has more than the other then the team with the most ready players wins so uh, if a team has four players and a team only has two players and you say hey look time's up you've got to be very hard on this you can't just drag it out um you can give them warnings in fact i'd, I'd give them a five minute warning ten minute warning with three minute warning it's up to you but you can say hey time's up this team defaultly wins and then just leave if they've got a problem they can contact me um in the event that they're drawed um is the difficult <laughs> is the difficult one coin toss it's a question mark i'm going to accept your judgment on what do you whatever you believe a team should win if a team is in early it doesn't it it, it 
does it shouldn't really bear on it but if a team is in early and most of the team is there whereas the other team came late and only two people were there and you get the idea where I'm going you decide if it's a draw uh, so just to recap if one team is ready and another team is not ready uh, the team that is ready at the time of starting the game they win if man that felt like an earthquake if um <clears throat> one team has less players than another team uh, that team obviously loses if in the event they're both drawn then you get to do a coin toss or whatever to determine who wins I would say a coin toss would be reasonably fair they just call heads or tails and whoever wins wins but if they're not going to play their game then you just do it for them you give me a result that's all I care about right so that's that's how you host the actual lobby um, let's get to this thing where is it here we go right some of you will see this you'll either get a PDF or you'll either get the document itself or you'll get um, pictures um, probably PDF is, is, more, is more likely with the break and you're like what the hell am I looking at I don't understand what I'm, what's going on um, the top right bracket here is obviously the date this is actually the link to your bracket so uh, this is bracket one this is bracket two this is bracket three and at present there is no one in bracket four but if there was a bracket four that's where it's going to be and the cross in pink is the times so these are the times that we should really be looking uh, to get underway so we might start at 10 o'clock or we could start beforehand if everyone's ready or um, that just gives an indication to everyone what time they should roughly be there <coughs> picture number two is um Sorry, pitch number one. Still on that one. Still on that pitch number one. Um, so these are the times going across there. Uh, these are the hosts. So you, you're responsible for creating the lobby. Uh, these are the people that are casting it. You have to take note if you are hosting a lobby, you should probably wait for your caster, uh, even if both teams are ready. However, if that time comes, um, so for example, if Lenny here uh, is waiting for 49 and 15 minutes have passed and she needs to start the game, she has to start the game, she can't wait forever, uh, it's not her fault that there was, the caster wasn't there, but rather than, <laughs> rather than starting at 15 minutes early, she should probably check with the caster to make sure that they're okay with, uh, that they're around, because they might not be around, they might be in another match, um, or they might have gone AFK or something, so if you're hosting a lobby, just check on it. This is the password that you should use and it may seem arbitrary and random at first um, because it's just a bunch of letters and a bunch of a bunch of numbers with a bunch of letters with numbers following it followed by another bunch of letters um, actually it's it's a formula the formula is your bracket um, and then the match so just because i am cool uh, dun, 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 dun. Oh, where, where is it where is it where is it not prepared I was not prepared for this. Hey, here we go. I closed it. Right. So on this page, let's close that. On on this page, let's close that. On this page, hey, success. On this page, you'll see that there is a, a nick and a ch column with a with a letter in it that actually corresponds directly to the bracket match. So a b c d. A, B, C, D, E, F, J, K, oh my god, new tabs, E, F, J, K, G, L, M, G, L, M, and so on and so forth, so you get the idea, until the bracket is complete, so, uh, and that's how you get the formula, your bracket and then the match letter. So if you're on bracket one, your passwords are always going to start with B1, and then it's going to be followed by the match letter. Now the reason we have this is for a couple of reasons. One, if uh, someone has to go and they need to put in somebody else, if they have to sub in somebody else to host their match, they don't have to ask questions. Um, they don't have to try and communicate with TeamKit and say, I'm now your admin, um, this is the, the password we're going to use. The teams will already know this is the password to use. Um, hopefully if, if the email goes out correctly um, so they'll just join based on the email password so they'll be like I'm a bracket one e, uh, it should be E because I'm in this match sweet jump in there we go I can see Niles was there I can see 49 is there perfect this is also how you're going to report the win to me in Skype or on Steam you will say B1 if the team winner is such and such because then I'll just go over here and go uh, bracket one uh, go to match F and then indicate the winner based on the message that you sent me so make sure you send the message correctly because if it's wrong um, you can cause some headaches <laughs> big big headaches but in any case in case it's not wrong um, good stuff you did your job 
done. Some of you, particularly those in bracket one and bracket two, will notice that your name appears in both brackets. That is because at different times, such as 10 a.m. and 10.20, you are hosting two different channels. There are only tw uh, two different lobbies, which are only 20 minutes apart. So at 10 o'clock or beforehand, or 10 a.m. in the morning on Saturday, the 28th of February, you'll be hosting a match. By 10, 19, 10, 17, you need to be out, right? The game can't start at that time. You need to be gone and setting up the next lobby, next lobby for 10.20 using, again, the codes. And the codes are different, see? Uh, here is B1, B1B and this one's B1B2B. So bracket two, match B. For those of you who are lucky enough to be in bracket three, you have a massive amount of time between your matches. So here we've got 10 and then we've got 11.15 and then 11.20, so you'll have 15 minutes all the way through. At this present, at this time, you don't have any matches in another bracket. But if it does, if we do get suddenly uh, another eight teams overnight, then you will also be doing bracket four. So you'll be doing bracket three and bracket four, in, in a similar in a similar case. Except of course, Tondas who can't cast and also host brackets at the same time. Uh, that will be subbed in by Avril, who was I've indicated down here. So just to recap. Uh, those in bracket 3 are only hosting these matches unless uh, I update you to say bracket 4 is also live. Uh, bracket 1 is doing those two. This is the time, this is the password for the particular match and there's your name. You should wait for your caster if he's coming. So back to Dota, so you know where it is. Here we go, edit settings, that's where you put your password. Good stuff. Hopefully that's all straight clear um, and everybody understands what's going on. If you have any problems during the course of the event, you can also message me on Steam and Skype. I'm going to try and stick to Skype if I can. One message platform. Or one, one <laughs> messaging platform rather than 50. Um, and I will try and resolve it for you at the time. But uh, I'm not going to accept late teams. Teams is their responsibility. It's in the rules. It says it is your responsibility to keep the, for timekeeping of you, yourself and your team. It's not our job to chase them up. Um, will be reasonably lenient to a certain degree. I've allowed a decent amount of time between when you need to host new matches, particularly in bracket three. They've actually got quite a lot of time before their next match. But if bracket four does come online, then you'll be under the same restraints. You'll need to make sure that your match ticks on nice and easily. Now, that's for Saturday. Sunday, it's, it's virtually the same thing. Um, different sets of hosts so those guys who helped on saturday you don't necessarily need to help on sunday do log on and say hey you're here and that you're prepared to help because you never know what could happen um but i've set it up this way um on purpose a little bit just so that everyone can actually have a weekend uh that's not full of just dota but also that um and it, it lightens the load a little bit so hopefully that works out for you guys as it will for me hopefully uh, last question that I had before which I didn't ask is what happens if the network goes down now if the network goes down um, we then have to go into damage control mode and I will be making a video for Kevin who is going to be our damage control man uh, on the day if we do go to that mode and I will be making a, a video for the for the primary casters which is uh, Tondas and uh, 49 Otherwise, hopefully that answers all the questions that you will have for hosting the event. Yes, it is sanctioned by Valve. Yes, it is in-game. Uh, if you have any other questions, uh, please fire them to me via email, and I'll try and answer them as best I can.